this is how comfortable are you with being yourself meaning how comfortable are you with being in a relationship with the guy that you chose to be in a relationship with you see i was talking to a client the other day and she was telling me how when she was around this one particular guy she noticed that she was always nervous couldn't really speak up she was always tongue-tied her body was just tingling all over and she was just a nervous wreck and then when she would get around this other guy that had been in her life for many years they were dating off and on but she really wasn't giving him the time of day he was kind of her place keeper if you will but she noticed every single time that she would get around that guy that she was super comfortable the anxiety that she had with that other guy plus other men that she would hang out with was not there and she was like I am very comfortable when I am with this other guy that I pretty much had written off and maybe even had put him in the friend zone. I'm comfortable with him. And so today I want to talk to you about how to be more comfortable with who you are and especially when we are choosing the men that we have chosen right how to be more comfortable in the skin that you are actually in and not allow your nerves to overtake you now here's the thing if you constantly get those nervous feelings and i mean not the excited ones like literally you don't feel that you can be yourself you have to feel like you, you feel that you have to pretend to be someone else to put on a show in order to keep this guy around or to keep his attention attracted on you then you are absolutely with the wrong guy because you are going to have to keep that up. You're going to have to maintain that. And sis, that can be exhausting. Who wants to be exhausted in their relationship? No woman that I know and no man that I know wants to be exhausted. And so if you are not completely comfortable, meaning you guys have been um, past the initial dating phase, like you have been with this person for a period of time where the initial a jitters if you will should be gone but you're still feeling them then it's because your body is telling you that this is not your forever mate and when we don't listen to our bodies when we don't listen to our gut when we don't listen to that still small voice like that i like to call god then this is when we get into a lot of situations that are unnecessary unnecessary situations where you feel that you have to be somebody else you have to show up as somebody else you can't be yourself you can't really let down your hair if you will you have to keep yourself in this box maybe even um, portray yourself with this as this perfect woman who has the perfect house perfect car perfect kids perfect career perfect 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 and it is driving you bananas but guess what you don't realize it is absolutely driving the guy that you're dating or the guy that has chosen you a little bit crazy too now if he's saying you're driving him crazy too and now why am i saying that is because he feels that he doesn't really know you and and the thing about it is he's waiting for the ball to drop because none of us are perfect and so if you are portraying yourself with this perfect person that got everything right everything is going home the door all the time you never have any problems that's great for a period of time but life gets us all life gets us all and so again seven ways for you to be more comfortable with who you truly are the first thing is to identify if you really resonate more with being an introvert an extrovert or you could be a combination of both so i hear that some people are extroverts when they're around a lot of people but absolutely they need to go away recover and recharge so they can get back to their own introvert introverted self and really hear their own thoughts and really evaluate what was actually happening but most of it is because being around a lot of extroverts or just a lot of people period they feel drained and so they need to recharge themselves and get their own energy to energy back so knowing this if you are an introvert or an extrovert it can help you understand why it may be harder to be alone with your own feelings so understand which side of the spectrum which side of the coin that you actually land on and or if you are both but just know where you at the second thing to do is literally to stop comparing yourself to other people sis the more that you compare yourself to other people, the more that you are going to be on the end, losing end of the stick. We have to learn to accept who we are, be comfortable with who we are, be comfortable with, with what we bring to the table, be comfortable with what we know and don't know, because it's absolutely okay for you not to know something. 
it's not okay for you to pretend that you know something or know everything because that means that you're cutting off your brain to be open to learning something new and guess what nobody likes to be around a know-it-all like literally I had this girlfriend of mine and we don't talk much now but I know for me this is why we don't talk much now and it's because anytime I said that I was going to do something or had just experienced something she already had done it had already experienced it and and I mean every single thing and it wasn't just with me it was with a group of friends that we mutually know and I'm, I'm not saying that she was trying to one up us but I do know that every experience that each and every one of us had she had already been there and done that and it was just annoying because not only did she already experience everything she would take over the story as if she brought up the conversation to talk about in the first place and before you know it, it was all about her and that was very I was over it I was like now nah, now nah, this ain't for me because I'm not in the competition with you and I can't even get out my full thoughts with you because you take over the conversation over time all the time it was annoying and exhausting and I am a person who enjoys, who loves, absolutely adores my peace. So if I'm feeling that you're coming for me in any type of way, I am going to move on with life because I don't have time to, uh, com to, to compete with you. So I don't compare myself to people and I don't want you, sis, to be comparing yourself to people because to people and to other couples because we have a tendency to do that when we're in our relationships as well not only are we comparing ourselves to what other people look like or the body type that they have or the car or the house or the job or the whatever right the man whatever that they have we're also comparing the um the romantic relationship and what the spouse is doing for that person over there and why your spouse ain't doing it for you like listen you cannot compare yourself to another couple you and your spouse are you and your spouse now if there is something that you want to do because you find it sexy or you find it like oh I actually want to incorporate that and bring that into my own relationship then do that but don't start comparing and then giving your spouse a hard time because he's not doing X Y and Z you probably never told him about X Y and Z and then on top of that even if you did that doesn't mean that he wants to do X Y and Z just because you brought it to the table it is a matter of both of you mutually wanting to do these things for one another and um but he still has to be on board to do it like that might not be in his makeup to do like and i'll just bring up chivalry i hear the chivalry is dead right i don't believe that it's dead but i do believe that there are people and um those a part of a a generation is what I'll say a generation that's not necessarily accustomed to seeing those things and so they themselves did not take on being chivalrous but I don't think that it's dead but the point that I'm bringing up is the person or couple that you're comparing yourself to the man is very chivalrous to his wife or girlfriend significant other and you are feeling very sad and even jealous because your significant other does not do that for you I just want you to open up your mind to not be jealous and not compare yourself to that couple and just have a conversation about the importance of chivalry and how you would like to see it in your relationship and give several examples and then even help to remind your spouse to do said things because he will win with you and that's the thing if you give him the blueprint and he's for you because you still can give him the blueprint and the blueprint and if he's not for you meaning he does not see your relationship going anywhere he does not see you in his life long haul it does not matter what you do it doesn't matter what you say he's not going to do it is because you are not a part of his future so He's not going to do it for you anyway. So you have to realize the type of man that you are with, the type of man that you have chosen, right? And so you do have to give him the opportunity to show up. And then he has to do the showing up, right, in that manner, whatever it is that you're um, speaking about. In this case, I'm talking about chivalry, right? But you, gave him, you, got, you have to give them the chance and the opportunity to know what your expectations are so he can meet them again this is if he wants to meet him and if he sees you in his future then he will meet them the third thing is to make sure that you are taking care of yourself this is why you don't have to come um, this is how you can be more comfortable with yourself by taking care of 
yourself. This means getting the proper amount of sleep for your body because it's different for everybody, right? Eating the right foods that um, make your body feel good instead of sluggish. Drinking more water, right? Taking care of your skin, uh, which all of these things are going to make you feel healthier and even more grounded. So just making sure that you are taking care of yourself. If you notice you need to drink some more water, which is the simplest thing that you can do, then do that, right? Um, if you notice you need to take care of your body more, but like you don't like the word exercise, then just do movement, which means don't sit there for hours upon hours upon hours on a couch or on a chair doing nothing netflix and chilling all night or binge watching something get up and move your body literally you can do that while you are binge watching you just get up and do some sit-ups get up and do some push-ups get up and do some jumping jacks run in place like there are a plethora of things that you can do without needing to go to the gym like literally you get some free weights and sit there and pump some iron while you are binge watching your show and you're still moving so now you're accomplishing two things at one time the show that you want to see as well as the body that you are wanting to create slowly but surely the fourth thing is to make sure that you are doing things happy this is absolutely going to make you feel more comfortable with you because here's the thing now you become more interesting to other people by being able to share the things that interest you and now if you are dating then this is the things that you can say hey I like to do X Y and Z if they've never done it now this is your opportunity to introduce him to say it thing if you guys are in a relationship right or in a marriage you don't want things to get stale so you want to consistently still do things that you want to do and this also means even if your spouse does not want to do them with you still go out and do the things that make you happy that make you feel young that make you feel sexy that make you feel beautiful you know i like to go to the theater the theater um live theater the live theater is not my husband's thing so i still make sure that i go myself and now i'm starting to take my daughter and she's enjoying it not everything but she is enjoying mommy daughter time plus going to see live shows with me and so I don't want to stop seeing live shows because he's not interested that's what I like to do that's what makes me happy or at least one of the things that makes me happy so I'm going to do the things that make me happy so I can continue to um, show up as authentic as I can in my own relationship and I want you to do the exact same thing figure out what your hobbies are and get back to doing them if you have stopped doing them for whatever reason don't burn yourself out and forget to take care of you. We talked about taking care of yourself. This is also taking care of yourself by making sure you are doing the things that make you happy because we take care of and make sure that everybody around us is happy. Now it's time for you to put yourself on the list as well as at the top of your list and even being selfish when it comes to you making date nights for yourself. Do the things that make you happy. Number five is to embrace all of your flaws. All of us have something about ourselves that we do not like for whatever reason. And because I'm speaking to my beautiful ladies out there, I'm sure there may be some of you out there that have had child or children, and maybe you have some stretch marks. It's all right. They're your flaws. It is my birthright, if you will, to have those marks. Now, Luckily for me, they're not bad, but I still know that they're there. I still can see them. I also have a C-section mark from, you know, having a C-section, an emergency C-section for my daughter. So there are some things that we don't like about ourselves that when I was in my 20s, I didn't have pretty much any flaws on my body. And now I have some things and some, some things that I don't like, right? And I'm just working on them, but also embracing them because they are me and I am them. They're me and I am them. If I didn't have my uh, birthright marks, if you real, for my daughter or my C-section scar, then she wouldn't be here, right? And I'm so happy that she's here. All the things that my body went through while making sure that she was nurtured well and growing and developing healthy and blah, 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 right? I'm super happy. So all of your flaws, all of the things that you look at and really like kind of even lightweight, get disgusted or you don't like to look at yourself naked. There are some people out there that don't want to look at themselves naked. I say stand in front of the mirror. Birthday suit, not even bra or panties, birthday suit and speak life into all of the areas that you deem as flaws. Speak life into them. Embrace them, love them, rub them, touch them. Let them know how much you appreciate them being there. And if 
you don't like them, work on, work on, work on, work on making them softer, smoother, smaller, etc. You got to do the work though. You got to do the work. Number six is to embrace your kooky personality. Now, I am a, I'm a nutcase. I will make noises. I'm totally, I'll hear some birds and start doing some stuff. I'm, I'm a nutcase, but I love it, love it, love it. <laughs> uh, I do things with my daughter all the time by being nutty. My husband will see us being nutty together because he's more serious. That's not my personality. That's he is. So I let him do him, and I'm going to do me. I am a nutcase, and he just look at us and shake his head. I'm okay with that. I do have a kooky personality and I own it and I want you to own your kookiness as well because this is how you are comfortable with yourself. Like literally, my baby is five years old and we love music. And anytime she hears some music, I don't care where we at. If she say, mommy, let's dance, I'm dancing. And sometimes that happens in the supermarket. Sometimes that happens when we're walking on the street. Sometimes that happens when we're... Um, you know, in a serious building when I'm trying to take care of something, like it don't matter. Let's do it. You want you ready to dance? Let's do it. It's all of it's all of five, ten seconds. It ain't even long. But what I what I witnessed though is that when other parents or other moms see me doing that, they they literally will say, I wish I could do it. And I'm like, you can't just do it. Because where I'm at and the space that I'm at in my life, I don't really care what you think about me. I don't care if you think I can dance or can't dance. Don't care. What I care about is making sure that my daughter gets these beautiful memories no matter where we are. No matter. It don't matter. And if I'm busy at the moment, right, I take care of the thing that I want to take care of. And then I get back to making sure that she knows that she's an important person in my life and we dance. Or I listen to her story or look at the thing that she's trying to show me or whatever it is. But embrace your kooky personality and all that goes with it because you are you so be you because nobody else can be you like you can be you the seventh and final way to uh, understand how to be more comfortable is to learn to be all by yourself literally people do not like to be alone because of the things that come up when it is quiet and the things that are here and you have to learn to embrace those things and to figure out why those things are keep are, are coming up or why they keep coming up and then start to ask yourself questions why is this bothering me so much why does this one thing keep popping up every time it gets quiet or I'm by myself this thing pops up and the reason why that thing keeps popping up is because you haven't dealt with it which is why you keep avoiding it, which is why I keep coming back, because you have yet to deal with the feelings and emotions that this thing is making you feel. And until you can deal with the things that deal with your emotions on why that thing or things keep coming up, keep plaguing your mind that you want to keep being busy, 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 busy about until you deal with those things, they're going to keep coming. Is going to keep showing up until you deal with it and guess what your test is coming to see if you actually learn the lesson to see if you can pass the test because if you can pass the test you're not gonna have to repeat that again but if you can't pass the test it's coming back and actually when it comes back it's usually worse more ferocious when it comes back so be more comfortable with yourself by being by yourself. You don't always have to be doing something, being around people all the time. Be with you because if you can't be with you alone for minutes, hours, days, weeks, months by yourself, nobody else is going to want to be around you because you don't know how to sit still. You don't know how to be quiet when it's just time to be quiet. You always feel that you have to Fill the space with something, and usually that something is in the form of talking or doing something. I just want to chill, because people that can chill are good with themselves. Not everybody, but most most that have done their work, chill. And nothing is going to deter you from your chill mode. Because I understand that I need this. I need this to recharge. I need this to understand why I am feeling this way. Why am I reacting this way? Why am I showing up in this manner? 
because you need to get the clarity. You need to get the clarity so you can be more comfortable with who you are and the space that you are in in this moment. I am Marshawn Alanio, your favorite shift relationship strategist, where I help black Christian women that are married or in long-term relationships to stop feeling disconnected and unloved and shift you to feeling heard, understood, and appreciated via my books, digital courses, and small group coaching program. I love you guys, and there's nothing that you can do about it. If you need some help, look down in the description box below to click on the link so you can get the help that you need. I love you guys. Goodbye.